The Panama Canal was one of the largest construction projects in history, requiring engineering on an unprecedented scale and innovative solutions to seemingly insurmountable problems. The goal for building the Panama Canal was to create a direct shipping route from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean because previously ships from the East Coast circumnavigated all the way through South America to reach the West Coast, which took a long time and was dangerous. Did you know that it is one of the few construction projects in the world that despite facing many challenges, it was completed in 1914, two years ahead of the 1916 target? So let us explore how the construction of the Panama Canal can inspire project managers. In today's video, we will be showing you the biggest mega project in history Panama Canal. Without further ado, let's begin. To that end, in 1850 the United States and Great Britain negotiated the Clayton Bulwer Treaty to rein in rivalry over a proposed canal through the Central American Republic of Nicaragua. The Anglo-American Canal, however, never went beyond the planning stages. French attempts to build a canal through Panama, a province of Colombia, advanced further. Led by Ferdinand de Lesseps, the builder of the Suez Canal in Egypt, the French began excavating in 1880. Malaria, yellow fever, and other tropical diseases conspired against the de Lesseps campaign, and after nine years and a loss of approximately 20,000 lives, the French attempt went bankrupt. In spite of such setbacks, American interest in a canal continued unabated. The Hay Ponsfo Treaty of 1901 abrogated the earlier Clayton Bulwer Treaty and licensed the United States to build and manage its own canal. Following heated debate over the location of the proposed canal, on June 19, 1902, the U.S. Senate voted in favor of building the canal through Panama. Within six months, Secretary of State John Hay signed a treaty with Colombian Foreign Minister Tom's Heron to build the new canal. The financial terms were unacceptable to Colombia's Congress, and it rejected the offer. President Roosevelt responded by dispatching U.S. warships to Panama City on the Pacific and Colón on the Atlantic in support of Panamanian independence. Colombian troops were unable to negotiate the jungles of the Darien Strait in Panama, declared independence on November 3, 1903. The newly declared Republic of Panama immediately named Philip Bunavarilla a French engineer who had been involved in the earlier de Lesseps Canal attempt, as envoy extraordinary and minister plenipotentiary. In his new role, Bunavarilla negotiated the Hay Bunavarilla Treaty of 1903, which provided the United States with a 10-mile wide strip of land for the canal, a one-time $10 million payment to Panama, and an annual annuity of $250,000. The United States also agreed to guarantee the independence of Panama. Completed in 1914, the Panama Canal symbolized U.S. technological prowess and economic power. Although U.S. control of the canal eventually became an irritant to U.S.-Panamanian relations, at the time it was heralded as a major foreign policy achievement. There were two attempts to build the Panama Canal. The first attempt to build the canal was made by Ferdinand de Lesseps, a French diplomat and administrator who initiated and led the construction of the Suez Canal. After the huge success of the Suez Canal, he set his eyes on building the Panama Canal. But this new construction project failed spectacularly for several reasons. The first error was the lack of planning and not listening to experts. For example, during the International Congress, organized by Ferdinand de Lesseps in pairs and attended by participants from all over the world, it was suggested by the engineers to build a lock and dam canal, rather than a sea level canal, which would be infeasible. However, it was later decided to build a sea level canal. This is a classic example of not getting expert advice and ensuring the failure of the project from the beginning during the planning stage. There were many other challenges. The weather was hot, muggy, and rainy. The soil was not stable, and there were regular floods and earthquakes. Diseases such as bubonic plague, malaria, pneumonia, and yellow fever were prevalent. Hence, the environmental and geological conditions were not the same while building the Suez Canal. There was no proper risk management to tackle the challenges. Also, Ferdinand de Lesseps' team lacked proper planning resources and trained employees adapted to this context. After the financial and technical success of the Suez Canal, whose construction many thoughts was impossible, 
there might have been some overconfidence while building the Panama Canal. In the end, Ferdinand de Lesseps and his team abandoned the project. Remember, no two projects are the same. Every project is unique. In the meantime, the United States also wanted a canal in Central America for military reasons. The U.S. wanted their Navy ships to travel easily from the east to the west coast. At the behest of President Theodore Roosevelt, it was decided to buy the existing dilapidated assets of the French Endeavour and restart the construction project. So a new project leader was recruited, John Finlay Wallace, formerly the general manager of the Illinois Central Railroad. Wallace did a lot of investigating and experimenting, but he also faced another challenge. He could not accomplish much due to red tape imposed by the seven-member commission in Washington. So he was replaced by another project leader, John Stevens, an engineer who had experience building railroads. And in the meantime, the bureaucratic commission in Washington was dissolved by Roosevelt. Unlike Ferdinand de Lesseps and John Finlay Wallace, he was a technical person and was familiar with construction projects. He put a halt to the digging and focused more on planning, infrastructure, and logistics. Thanks to his knowledge and experience, he employed the use of railroads to move resources and remove the mud that was dug. Since the construction project necessitated the knowledge of hydraulics and the building of large concrete walls, which was too complicated for John Stevens, and because of his dislike for humid climates, he resigned. Then end President Theodore Roosevelt appointed a new chief engineer and project leader, George Kothels, of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Under his tenure, risks were identified and tackled head-on. To tackle the prevalent diseases, he invested heavily in insect control and public health measures. He made sure that his workforce was well-fed, well-housed, and well-equipped. He also rewarded his employees and workers with medals. This boosted productivity and morale. He planned every phase of the project in detail and allocated resources accordingly. And finally, the first ship crossed the canal on August 15, 1914. The Panama Canal construction project also illustrates the importance of hiring the right project manager for your projects. The Panama Canal construction project significantly altered modern commerce, trade, and travel. It reduced the transit time from the East Coast to the West Coast of America in half. No wonder that the American Society of Civil Engineers has called the Panama Canal one of the seven wonders of the modern world. The canal locks operate by gravity flow of water from Gatton, Alavuela, and Miraflores lakes, which are fed by the Chagres and other rivers. The locks themselves are of uniform length, width, and depth, and were built in pairs to permit the simultaneous transit of vessels in either direction. Each lock gate has two leaves, 65 feet, 20 meters, wide, and 6.5 feet, 2 meters, thick, set on hinges. The gates range in height from 46 to 82 feet, 14 to 25 meters. Their movement is powered by electric motors recessed in the lock walls. They are operated from a control tower, which is located on the wall that separates each pair of locks and from which the flooding or emptying of the lock chambers is also controlled. The lock chambers are 1,000 feet, 300 meters, long, 110 feet, 33 meters, wide, and 40 feet, 12 meters deep. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.